Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a little look at this ocean shader. Here's the wireframe, we're using DirectX 11 real-time tessellation. If we go back into lit mode, so what we can see at the moment are the UV coordinates. The idea is that we can map waves onto each of these subgroups of UVs and it will create some nice variety. If I just increase the scale, we can see that the UVs don't necessarily have to be as small as they appeared beforehand. We're using vector displacement in order to animate crashing waves, so this is still in its early stages. Let's just have a look at how it works. If I scale it down, increase the displacement magnitude, you can see that we have these waves here. So at the moment they're completely static. So we have this texture here, okay, and this is the vertex displacement map that creates this displacement of the vertices. And the y-axis is um, the width that we can see here. In the texture map, we're looking down on it like this. Right? Like this. Instead of just having a static vector displacement map, we can bias different parts of the wave so that they sample different parts of this texture at any moment in time. So we, we create a loop, okay? So uh, you can take a time node and then use um, modulus arithmetic to loop it. So you could say every 12 seconds loop round, you know, mod 12. And then we can basically tell it which part of this texture to sample for any area in world space at any given time in that 12 second interval. So the end result can be crashing waves on the shore. I'm quite proud of this feature. We can change the propagation direction. This wasn't the easiest thing to integrate into the shader. So yeah, we can fine-tune the propagation direction and I'm thinking so at the moment this is just a um, scalar value propagation direction but I was thinking that it might be a good idea to actually have vertex colors representing the propagation direction or maybe a flow bitmap a flow map as they're called so the flow map can manipulate the propagation direction so that if there is an object out at sea, the water will flow around it. At the moment, it's in a it's very basic form. We can adjust the speed, so we can make it a lot faster. 20. Very slow. Zero. And we can look at the wireframe. Here we have the wireframe. So if we turn the speed up to 10, five. because everything is projected into world space, we can have multiple assets using this material. So if I just duplicate it, look, it seamlessly integrates. And if I rotate it, See, it still maps on seamlessly. We also need a normal map that's um, representative of our vertex displacement, because when we displace vertices, they're transformed, their position is transformed in world space, but the normals are not manipulated, so we need the normals to agree with the repositioning, the transforming of the vertex positions, so a normal map is required. Here's the material, okay, and well this is the material so far, so this is kind of the base, this is the heart of the material, that the aesthetics are to follow that this is the fundamental stuff that will drive the final shader. 
to start with, we have the propagation direction. It's just a value between 0 and 1, representing 0 to 360 degrees. Then we use some trigonometry to rotate a vector field about the x-axis. Now, the vector field in this case is uh, just the UVs. Actually, no, they're not, are they? Let me think about this. No, they're, so actually it's a scalar field, now I think about it. We then also have to apply that to our displacement map. So here we have our displacement map, and here we have some trigonometry just to um, perform the same rotation on the vector displacement map as we perform on our master UV coordinates. Then we break up the master UV coordinates into subgroups. So if you look, I've defined some arbitrary ranges. We generate lots of independent UV groups and uh, combine them. At the moment, that is basically everything that's happening. I pan just by using addition. I'm not a fan of using nodes, such as the panner node, where you can just use your own mathematics. I think it's more simple, because I know exactly what's going on. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much everything. I, so I'm using frac nodes, which just looks at the fraction portion of the value. It essentially creates a loop. So here we can see the normal map. Great, so thanks for watching, and I hope you found this interesting.